Hello, welcome to the course on Hadoop development offered by Data Raj Academy. My name is Venu and in today's session, we will discuss about some of the other big data technologies that are in use today like new SQL databases and in-memory databases. I hope you will all find this session interesting and informative. This session is a continuation of our pursuit to explore some of the technologies for handling big data like Hadoop. In the earlier sessions, we have discussed about the big data problem and distributed computing as a solution. Distributed computing is a complex process in itself. So we have seen the necessity of software technologies like Hadoop and NoSQL databases which leverage the power of distributed systems and at the same time they make life easier for the programmer in resorting to distributed computing. In this session, we will discuss about few more emerging class of technologies like new SQL databases and in-memory databases. So let's get started. The landscape for database management systems is changing more rapidly these days. We are aware of the rise of NoSQL database systems of various different forms like column, document, key value and graph based databases. We also see a developing market for in-memory database management where the DBMS relies on main memory instead of disk for data storage, management and manipulation. But there is another category of DBMS evolving that is known as new SQL. New SQL technology is one of the several trends impacting the DBMS landscape. What are new SQL databases? Many enterprise OLTP database systems handle high profile data, example, financial and order processing systems. With the digital revolution and rise of user base, they also need to be able to scale. For example, an organization has launched a new application and so far the response is overwhelming. Now, what if the database won't be able to keep up with the demand? It's a valid concern because as its adoption grows from 500 to 5 million users, the database becomes overloaded, crippling performance and degrading the user experience and frustrating customers, which ultimately impacts the organization's reputation and revenue. So how to scale the database to keep up with the increasing volumes and changing business demands? No SQL database solutions which are highly scalable appear to be suited for such needs, but they are base systems and do not support acid properties. The nature of OLTP systems are such that they cannot give up strong transactional and consistency requirements. The only options previously available for these organizations were to either purchase a more powerful single node machine or develop a custom middleware that distributes queries over traditional DBMS nodes. Both approaches are prohibitively expensive and thus are not an option for many. New SQL database systems are born out of such necessity. New SQL is a class of modern relational database management systems that seek to provide the same scalable performance of NoSQL systems for online transaction processing read-write workloads while still maintaining the asset guarantees of a traditional database system. The goal of new SQL is to deliver high availability and performance to modern data like no SQL without sacrificing the robust consistency requirements and transaction capabilities. In other words, new SQL database management systems deliver ACID transactions. ACID is an acronym for atomicity, consistency, isolation and durability. Each of these four qualities is necessary for a transaction to be able to ensure the integrity of data. Some of the examples of new SQL databases are VoltDB, Clusterisk, MemSQL, etc. New SQL database management systems can be described as a hybrid of relational database management systems and no SQL databases. New SQL databases have distributed fault tolerant architectures like no SQL databases and also support acid properties like relational database management systems. That is, New SQL databases run on a distributed network of nodes just like NoSQL databases and hence are characterized by the features like high availability and performance, replication and sharding for fault tolerance, etc. In-memory capability is an additional feature typical of few modern NoSQL offerings and can also be deployed in the cloud. 
There are many new SQL databases in the market today. Although new SQL systems vary greatly in their internal architectures, the two distinguishing features common amongst them is that they all support the relational data model and use SQL as their primary interface. That is, SQL can be used to query new SQL databases. The applications typically targeted by these new SQL systems are characterized by being OLTP, that is, having a large number of transactions that are short-lived. Queries touch a small subset of data using index lookups, that is, no full table scans. And mostly the queries are repetitive, that is, executing the same queries with different inputs. However, some of the new SQL databases are also HDAP systems, therefore, supporting hybrid transactional analytical workloads, that is, they can be used as an OLTP system and OLAP system as well. We need to understand and embrace new SQL to help our organizations and clients utilize the technology where and when it makes sense and necessary. We have to be careful though of using the term new SQL to differentiate or categorize database technology because there are no hard and fast rules that dictate what new SQL is or should be. First category of new SQL systems are completely new database platforms. These are designed to operate in a distributed cluster of nodes in which each node owns a subset of the data. These databases are often written from scratch with a distributed architecture in mind and include components such as distributed concurrency control, flow control and distributed query processing. By designing the new SQL RDBMS from scratch, the code can be expressly written for a distributed architecture and avoid some of the overhead of the traditional RDBMS. Example systems in this category are VoltDB, Clusterisk, MemSQL. The second category are highly optimized storage engines for SQL. These databases are not written from scratch with a distributed architecture in mind. Only the storage engine is developed which sits on top of the database. The term database engine or storage engine is frequently used interchangeably with database server or database management system. A database engine or storage engine is actually the underlying software component that a database management system uses to create, read, update and delete data from a database. Many of the modern DBMS support multiple storage engines within the same database. That is, multiple storage engines can be plugged into the system that sits on top of the same database. For example, MySQL supports InnoDB as well as MyISAM storage engines. These engines provide the same programming interface as SQL but scale better than the default built-in engines of the databases. Examples of these new storage engines include MySQL cluster, InfoBright, TokuDB and MyROX. The third category provide a sharding middleware software layer to automatically split databases across multiple nodes. Scalebase is an example of this type of system. What is database sharding? Database sharding is a type of database partitioning that breaks very large databases into smaller, faster, more easily manageable parts called data shards. The word shard means a small part of a whole. Each individual partition is referred to as a shard or database shard. The governing concept behind sharding is based on the idea that as the size of a database and the number of transactions per unit of time made on the database increase linearly, the response time for querying the database increases exponentially. Additionally, the cost of creating and maintaining a very large database in one place can increase exponentially because the database will require high-end computers. In contrast, Data shards can be distributed across a number of much less expensive commodity servers. Data shards have comparatively little restriction as far as hardware and software requirements are concerned. It is an important database design principle widely adopted which have numerous advantages. Technically, sharding is a synonym for horizontal partitioning of a database. In practice, the term is often used to refer to any database partitioning that is meant to make a very large database more manageable. Since the tables are divided and distributed into multiple servers, the total number of rows in each table in each database is reduced. This reduces index size which generally improves search performance. A database shard can be placed on separate hardware 
and multiple shards can be placed on multiple machines. This enables a distribution of the database over a large number of machines, greatly improving performance. In addition, most of the times, the database sharding is done based on some real-world segmentation of the data. For example, we have huge customer-related data table. If the data sharding is done based on geography, like European customers related data is placed in one server and American customers related data is placed in an another, then it may be possible to infer the appropriate shard membership easily and automatically and query only the relevant shard. This will greatly improve the performance. Now let us take an example to understand this better. Suppose we have developed an application which is using MySQL database. We have got an overwhelming response and its adoption grew from hundreds to a few million users. So, we want to scale the database to keep up with increasing volumes and changing business needs. And more importantly, we want to scale our database without actually requiring to modify our application in any way. How do we do this? We can use a sharding software system like Scalebase. Scalebase is a middleware software layer that sits on top of the existing database infrastructure of the organization. Scalebase middleware software layer allows to scale specifically designed to meet the scalability and performance needs of next generation applications without changing the existing infrastructure or rewriting the application. The application now interfaces with a scale-based middleware layer, which in turn interfaces with MySQL database, just as it normally would with any other relational databases. The MySQL data layer shown here can be on any cloud. This layer provides a horizontally scalable database that automatically grows by spinning up new instances of MySQL as and when required. Scale-based middleware layer is a collection of useful softwares, each designed to serve specific purpose. Scale-based adds transaction management capabilities that maintain the database's asset properties. The Scale-based Analysis Gini looks at the existing application and database, as well as all the queries and traffic, and it performs an analysis which builds an optimal data distribution policy customized for the application. The Analysis Gini basically figures out the best way to break out the database and distribute it to other instances. This recommendation is made before the database ever goes into production on Scalebase, so that a DBA can approve or tweak the custom built data distribution policy. Scalebase views this plan as a living policy that can be adjusted as needed going forward. So now the application sees just one database. Scalebase virtualizes the database environment and speeds application performance with read-write splitting and automatic data distribution, all of which is completely transparent to the end user or application. And if a database fails, Scalebase provides automatic failover keeping the application running at peak performance 24 by 7. Companies can migrate an existing application to Scalebase's distributed database without making any changes to the underlying application. That is, no coding is necessary for the sharding. Scalebase handles the database distribution in real time and in a fully automated fashion. Vitus is another example of this type. Now, let us quickly look at in-memory computing technology. The volume of data being generated at the velocity today must be processed at a very high speed because the data is growing at a very fast rate. From a hardware-based point of view, data analysis consists of three components. The processor to perform the calculations, the storage to store the data, that could be secondary storage devices like disks or primary storage devices like RAM and a system that transfers data between the two. Naturally, the slowest of these components is the bottleneck for the performance of IT-based data analysis. The current bottleneck is the latency of storage. More specifically, it is not the latency of random access memory but the latency of hard disks. Processing power is not used to the full capacity because the data to be processed is not retrieved fast enough from the hard disks. Generally, data is stored on secondary storage devices like disks because it is more economical. This data, stored in secondary storage devices like disks, can be accessed through input-output channels that transfer data temporarily from secondary storage space to primary storage, that is into RAM, for processing purposes. In case of huge volume of data, this transfer consumes too much time during which the processors have to remain idle. Traditional systems have been based on disk storage and these are increasingly regarded as inadequate to meet business intelligence needs of today. Accessing data placed in RAM or flash memory is much more quicker than accessing data placed in secondary storage devices like hard disks. When data accessing gets quicker, processors will no more be sitting idle. 
processor utilization will be optimal. In memory computing in a nutshell is moving data which has traditionally been stored on hard disks into memory. In memory computing technologies are used to facilitate high speed data processing. When the latency of data access is reduced, as a consequence, the process of data analysis is subject to a tremendous speed up. In memory processing is a developing technology for processing of data stored in an in memory database. An in memory database, also main memory database system or memory resident database is a database management system that primarily relies on main memory that is RAM for computer data storage. Whereas traditional database management systems employ a disk storage mechanism. In memory databases are faster than disk optimized databases because disk access is slower than memory access. In the in memory computing based technology, the RAM or the primary storage space is used for analyzing data which results in increasing computing speed. In memory databases have gained a lot of traction or popularity, especially in the data analytics space starting in the mid 2000s, mainly due to multi core processors that can address large memory and due to less expensive RAM. This has made in-memory computing economical for a wide variety of applications. In comparison to traditional database systems, in-memory computing databases are designed to leverage pure hardware advantages. And also, they have special softwares that help in intelligent data processing and data compression. In-memory databases also often have a built-in calculation engine which delivers close to real-time results to complex data queries that enable major additional performance gains. Furthermore, these features allow for processing of both transactional as well as analytical data. At last, it becomes possible to run operational applications and data analysis in close to real time on a single database. In memory processing allows data to be analyzed in real time, enabling faster reporting and decision making in business. Many technology companies are making use of this technology. Specialized databases are developed in order to move data into memory. For example, the in-memory computing database developed by SAP called High Speed Analytic Appliance uses a technique called sophisticated data compression to store data in the random access memory. HANA's performance is 10,000 times faster when compared to standard disks, which allows companies to analyze data in a matter of seconds instead of long hours. A customer of SAP HANA managed to reduce the time taken to run a report from one hour to one second. This illustrates the potential for performance gains. In-memory computing can help in tracking and monitoring customers' activities and behaviors, which allow organizations to take timely actions for improving customer services and thus customer satisfaction. This shift from traditional hard disk enabled data warehouses to in-memory computing enabled data warehouses also resulted in a reduction in layers on the way from raw data to the results of data analysis. In a traditional data warehouse based approach, raw data is stored in a data warehouse. Part of this raw data is extracted to data marts for the purpose of context and user specific pre-aggregations and pre-calculations. The results stored in a data mart are requested by business intelligence applications for the processing and visualization of final results. As in traditional data warehouse, raw data is stored in an IMC enabled data warehouse. However, Business intelligence applications do not request partial results from data marts, but final results from the IMC enabled data warehouse. This is made possible by querying the built in calculation engine in the IMC enabled data warehouse and the results are computed in close to real time. In this case, the purpose of business intelligence applications is reduced to the proper visualization of the results queried. The layer of data marts becomes obsolete. Furthermore, IMC enabled data warehouses allow for a frequent update of raw data so that, for example, transactional applications can directly feed data into an IMC enabled data warehouse. There are a couple of potential technical hurdles with in memory data storage. First one is the volatility of RAM. Specifically, in the event of a power loss, intentional or otherwise, data stored in volatile RAM is lost. With the introduction of non volatile random access memory technology, in-memory databases will be able to run at full speed and maintain data even in the event of power failure. Secondly, the limitation on the size of the RAM. We can increase the size of the RAM on a node only to a certain limit. In the cloud computing world, the terms data temperature 
or hot data and cold data have emerged to describe the utility of the data and how data is stored in this respect. Hot data is used to describe mission critical data that needs to be accessed frequently, while cold data describes data that is needed less often and less urgently, such as data kept for archiving or auditing purposes. Hot data should be stored in ways offering fast retrieval and modification, often accomplished by in-memory storage, but not always. Cold data, on the other hand, can be stored in a more cost-effective way, and it is accepted that data access will likely be slower compared to hot data. While these descriptions are useful, there is no concrete definition for hot and cold. While storing data in memory confers performance advantages, it is an expensive method of data storage. An approach to realizing the benefits of in-memory storage while limiting its cost is to store the most frequently accessed data, that is hot data, in memory and the rest on disk. Since there is no hard distinction between which data should be stored in memory and which should be stored on disk, some systems dynamically update where data is stored based on data's usage. This approach is subtly different from caching, in which the most recently accessed data is cached as opposed to the most frequently accessed data being stored in memory. The first database engine to support both in memory and on disk tables in a single database, WebDNA, was released in 1995. They are a kind of hybrids which combine in-memory and on-disk database systems to store relevant data based on its utility and frequency of access. There are also many advanced frameworks such as Apache Spark and Apache Ignite that offer in-memory computing. Apache Spark is a free and open source lightning fast cluster computing technology designed for fast computation. The main feature of Spark is it's in-memory cluster computing that increases the processing speed of an application. Spark adds in-memory compute for ETL, machine learning, and data science workloads to Hadoop. Apache Spark can be set up on a Hadoop cluster. And Spark framework takes care of loading the datasets to be processed into memory from Hadoop's disk storage file system. The utilization of in-memory computing as a competitive tool needs talent to identify and serve the specific information needs of every single business. This requires effective management of data volumes and the respective analytical and transactional processes. So amongst the vast array of big data technologies available today, the kind of big data technology that is right for you will depend on your goals. Your best approach is to define your goals clearly at the outset and then go looking for products that will help you reach those goals. Finally, we want to hear from you. As the viewer of this tutorial, you are our most important critic and commentator. We value your opinion and want to know what we are doing right, what we could do better and any other words of wisdom you are willing to pass our way. We welcome your comments. Your feedback will be enormously helpful in improvising the final shape of this course. So please subscribe to the Data Raj channel and contribute any questions, comments or suggestions in the comment section below. Thank you.